Hello and welcome back to Race Gaming Videos. My name is Olo and I am joined today by Dolores, the Sleeping Arrow. This is a puppet summon, part of the third category of summons, the puppet summons. Recently, I covered the Dung Eater puppet. Yes, you can make the Dung Eater be a summon for you. But I was also interested by Dolores here because apparently they infinitely fire sleep arrows. But not just any arrows, the St. Trina arrows, the ones that have the most sleep buildup possible, which are a bit awkward and semi-expensive to run if you're using it in your own bow. Essentially, this is the best way to get sleep procs. So as you can see, yeah, this is a ranged sleep spamming summon, and conceptually that is very useful in many fights. Sleep in general is very powerful for a few reasons, and I don't know, it feels underused to me. In many cases, once you sleep a target, it's going to provide you with a free critical hit. In the case of the is here when I summon them in, they are spamming these sleep arrows out on the target, so I'm able to repeatedly get critical hits without really earning it throughout a boss fight. Sleep is incredible when it comes to duo boss fights, where you have multiple bosses attacking you at once. You guys will obviously know about the Godskin duo boss fight, because we have to defeat this boss to progress the main story. It's one of the most hated fights in the game, just because, yeah, you have two enemies coming at you at once. These guys, man, these new Elden Ring players, they don't know about Ornstein and Smo. Sleep is essentially a cheat code in that fight anyway, making it a lot easier. By having Dolores as a summon, you can have Dolores just sleep one of them, or even both of them, which is funnily possible, acting as a CC on one of the targets to make the fight much more manageable. This sleep lasts 60 seconds, which is a very long time in a fight, more than enough, as you can see, to clear out one of them before the other even has a chance of waking up. And I found that Dolores has pretty smart AI. They seem to try to make sure they're always at a medium to far range. Whenever an enemy is near to them, they begin kind of spam rolling, just getting out of there as fast as possible to reposition to be outside of melee distance, which is important for a summon like this. Even more intelligent though, Dolores stops attacking when their target is sleeping. Obviously, this would not be nearly as useful if it just kept going and woke up the targets that they're sleeping. Alongside those Satrina arrows for the fast buildup of sleep, Dolores is actually using a short bow, which allows them to use the barrage Ash of War on the bow, which is perfect for spamming out shots and applying a status like this. Outside of that, you've just got constant tick damage from the quick shots that they are sending out while reapplying the next sleep. Even in the example where an enemy cannot be true slept or critically slept, it still serves as a useful effect in even any duo fight that it can work in. Take these clean rot knights. They can't be true slept or critical slept, but they still get sort of staggered for a moment, allowing me to kind of clean through their health, making the fight all that much more manageable even though it's a duo fight. It is very rare that an enemy is truly immune rather than very resistant to sleep, like the duo pumpkin boss fight. These two are just immune to sleep, and that's, I guess, fair enough looking at them. So yeah, this is a fun and very unique summon with some great uses in quite a lot of specific fights. You don't have to worry about sleeping enemies yourself when you have Dolores by your side. So how do you get Dolores then? Dolores is actually one of Selvus's puppets and actually one of his favorites with some very interesting lore attached to all of this, Dolores was actually friends with Gideon, the leader of the round table, before he realized what they actually were, and the source of this puppet. But from that description, I'm sure you've worked out, oh, so this is tied to Silvus, who is a servant or part of the Rani faction. To get this summon then, all you need to do is progress part of Rani's storyline. There's a bit of misinformation out there right now that says that you must complete the whole storyline. Thankfully, we do not need to go that far. You just need to have completed the Finger Slayer Blade part of the storyline, and once you've handed that into Rani, Selvus will die at this step, and at the same time, Pidia, a carrion servant, will be killed by its own puppets. This is nearby in the same area. Upon this happening, Pidia actually drops the Dolores sleeping arrow. To give you better context, if for some reason you don't know yet, Rani's storyline takes place at Rani's Rise or the Three Sisters, which is just behind the Carrier Manor. You will need to defeat one boss at the back of Carrier Manor at the Royal Moongazing Grounds. And after that, you can go speak to Rani in Rani's Rise in this tower. After joining her faction, she will go tell you to go down below in her tower and speak to her three uh, compatriots. That's Blythe, that's Iggy the Giant, and Celevis. He has his own rise, his own tower, just to the southeast, and tells you to come speak with him. But we actually do not need to interact with him in any point past this to get this summon. After speaking with Rani a second time, she will tell you I'm going to sleep now and give you your mission, basically, to go work with Blaith. You need to find your way to the Eternal City 
Nokron. To do that, you're going to need to go to Red Main Castle and go defeat the Great Room boss there. After you do that, a world event will happen where a star crashes across the sky and lands into the ground, creating a crater and an entrance to Nokron. That crater is right here in Limgrave, just west of Fort Hay. Make your way over to the crater, go down below carefully, and as you progress through, you'll find Nokron. From here, it's pretty much a straight shot through Nokron. You're going to make your way across this bridge. We'll have a mini boss fight here. We'll cross the bridge further along we'll take a left off the bridge and find just here the ancestral woods grace and the location of the finger slayer blade is here in the night sacred ground i'm going to have you follow me from the ancestral woods grace to the exact location of the blade you're after There's a grace here for you to tap just so you've got a checkpoint here. But thankfully, just ahead of me is where we're going. And here we are. Inside this chest, you're going to get the Finger Slayer Blade. And that's what we need to bring to Rani. Returning to Rani with that blade, then she'll be very happy with you. She will basically say, that's all I needed from you. Great. Here's a gift, this inverted statue. And though there is more to her storyline, of course, you do not need that for this summon. At this stage, Celevis will be dead and you can go loot his stuff if you want in his tower. But we're going to pity her. We're just going to have to fall off the side of the Three Sisters sort of uh, plateau. Just beyond the top area of the Carrier Manor here. Or slightly northeast from Selvis's tower. As you approach this area though, you will hear Pidia screaming in agony as his own puppets that he apparently loved turn against him. Yep, as you make your way down to him, you can hear his death screams as they are murdering him. It's quite harrowing. Anyway, once you're down here at this horrible creepy scene of the three puppets standing around Pidia's body, you can loot him for his ball bearing and bring that to the round table and, you know, get the loot from that. But we want the summon and that is the second item drop here. I have a little theory for you. I think Pidia might actually be Celevis, and that Celevis was really a puppet. You find a note in the underground secret room of Celevis stating that this is his puppet. This is the Celevis puppet, hands off. And apparently this Pidia is also a puppeteer? I don't know, maybe coincidental, but this is Elden Ring. I don't know if it's anything's coincidental. But with that, you have Dolores the Sleeping Arrow. You now have infinite sleep arrows on demand in any fight where that's relevant and of course that's going to be quite a lot of fights in the game. I also want to note the cursed blood pot. This is a pot that you can craft that when you throw it at an enemy, summons that are currently active like Dolores will specifically target that enemy and you can see that I've tried to use it in a couple different fights. Unfortunately this means Dolores will wake up slept targets because they kind of go into like a frenzy but something to keep in mind for your summons in general. I also want to give you guys a quick tip in regards to summoning. I've mentioned this before, but for those who have not heard it, you can actually summon any single summon, no matter what FP it costs, even if, like me, you only have 10 mind. That's, of course, thanks to the Flask of Wondrous Physic. This provides me with a buff where no casts cost any FP, meaning also summons cost no FP. So it doesn't matter whether it costs 5, 500, 5,000. I can summon whatever I want during this buff. This buff is the Cerulean Hidden tier and as you can see eliminates all fp consumption for a period to get that hidden tier you need to come to this minor erd tree in the mount gilmer region or very close to the volcano manor it's very easy to go from the volcano manor itself and then head down and under towards the tree and then you must defeat the guardian of that tree to get the tier but for now that's everything i've got for you in regards to dolores the sleeping arrow a very cool and useful summon in quite a lot of specific fights if you have found the video useful interesting please drop a like so we can keep making more but for now I've been Hollow and you've been you. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.